Welcome to our first health talk of the year. I'm Laura Termini, founder of chickenall.com, and you can find a playlist of interviews on my YouTube channel, Laura Termini, Laura Termini. And we're going to start this year on a clean and hopeful, hopeful slate. After a global pandemic, we need to discuss the topic of mental health, our mental well being and every aspect of our life. So today with me, I have Dr. Felicia Gold, clinical neuropsychologist and assistant professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the University of Miami Health System. Welcome, doctor. Thank you so much for your uh, time. And just let, let me just start with Uh, this is a uh, the mental health is very important and we never discuss it and I think we should so let's start with the questions how do we keep a healthy emotional balance for the new year um well thank you for having me first and foremost I'm glad to be here and I'm so glad that you're talking about this topic it's really important and too often we put our mental health aside But as my former boss and chairman used to say, there is no health without mental health. So yes, maintaining a healthy emotional balance is really important as we go into the new year, as always. I highly recommend making mental health practices, healthy mental health practices, part of like a hygiene, like part of your routine. Um, and basic things that you hear all the time, but really thinking about how they impact your mental health, like prioritizing you know, your sleep, your activity level. I always, with my patients, I know something's wrong if they're not sleeping, eating, and being active. You know, either they're not sleeping or they're sleeping too much. Either they're, you know, not eating or they're eating too much. Or they're, you know, they're not active or they're going like too many places and there's no downtime, there's no me time. So I think prioritizing just like your self-care and those three important aspects, like looking at your sleeping, your activity level, and also you you know are eating properly or taking care of yourself you know that doctor the the pandemic gave comedians plenty of you know material during the, the you know the lockdown and plenty of us have been you know using social media to be part of a to feel that we are part of a community but do you think i've seen some videos that are disturbing and i i, I don't think people realize that it's not only about having a video of yourself singing and dancing it's about mental health and you need when you need help you need to go to a doctor absolutely have you seen that trend so i yeah i think that well too often times we're looking to the internet to be our other brain and solve all of our problems for us and you know mental health is something that really does need to be addressed you know in the real world in real time you can see a therapist like me on zoom and stay in your computer but it's a real-time interaction we're not looking at a video we're not looking at you know someone's instagram post of like oh this is what they did you know that's what i can do to take care of myself or you know or look at that person like they're letting themselves go so you know i can do or i don't look so bad because i'm comparing myself to the person on the instagram or the comedian or you know whatever you see and that's not really you know a healthy comparison either that's a very good point in your practice what are the common emotional imbalances or mental struggles that you see in your patients after a pandemic well i think that one of the big problem is um you know uh too much time in the social media for sure you know like a lot of comparative thinking you know i was always um told you know the comparative thinking was the seed of unhappiness like you know you're planting the seed and you're just only going to be unhappy if you're comparing yourself to others but i think in this age of social media and when we were isolated from people the only you know the only thing we had was looking at instagram and looking at you know facebook and that's a common thing that i have a common problem that a lot of my patients face is like seeing how people are doing and just wanting to compare 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 all the time and it really causes a lot of distress and unhappiness um so that's you know one of the big things that i see and then also the social isolation mm -hmm. in general people have been more socially isolated 
um, because of the pandemic. And then a lot of them, you know, maintain a persistent fear of socialization even after they're vaccinated and they know more and they know they can wear a mask and be outside and all that stuff. And they're still, you know, avoiding. And I think that causes a lot of problems as well. Human beings are meant to be social and we need each other and we need each other and we need the social support. So I see that's a, two things that are common is like the social isolation and like, oh, there's not a lot of going on. So I'm just gonna stay home. And, you know, that causes people to feel disconnected and, and you know, can be a little bit depressing and sad um, and then excessive, you know, reliance on social media. Let's talk about depression, doctor, because I, I've been reading a lot about it because I've been dealing with some depression the past two years since my my dad got diagnosed with um, Lewy, uh, Lewy dementia. And, uh, and it's been quite a ride for me because I wanted to try all the natural stuff first, but then I said to my doctor, to my psychiatrist, I, I think I need help. You know, and it's very, very common for us Latinos to stigmatize medication. And it's difficult for me even to talk about it, even though I have an audience and I've been very open with my mental health. But uh, I'm the kind of person that when I get depressed, I'm not in bed. You know what I mean? I'm very active and I, I'm very, uh, I'm a workaholic. So is there, that the, the kind of depressed people that can be in bed all day and act active people like me? Absolutely. And, you know, I commend you for having the bravery to come forward and share your story because one of the most important things that we can do to take away the stigma for mental health is for people like yourself, you know, figures in the community to come forward and share their story. It's one of, you know, the most powerful ways for us to combat this stigma because the stigma is terrible. And also, you know, side note, stigma is not just for mental health. People have stigma about everything in health. You know, I have stigma because, you know, I was diagnosed with cancer. I have stigma because I was, you know, I have diabetes and I have to, you know, check my insulin all the time. People are, you know, very uncomfortable having anything wrong with them. But the reality is that everybody has something, everybody. And so um, we need to just understand that your, your brain gets sick and your mental health can suffer just like anything else in your body, like back pain or, you know, developing another, another illness. So, you know, it's important to seek help and, and, you know, work past your stigma. Be aware that, you know, you have that within you and maybe it's a, a, in the way of you, you know, reaching out. But, you know, reach out, talk to people. If you go see a therapist, you don't actually have to take medication. You can just talk to a therapist and that's, you know, been proven. The research shows that it's absolutely very effective in treating depression and other mood disorders. So if you're not comfortable with taking medication, you can start there or, you know, you can go you know, directly with a psychiatrist. But absolutely going back to your other question, there are many patients that are very high functioning that still battle very significant forms of depression. Um, not everybody is in a vegetative state. In fact, one of the symptoms of depression is um, motor agitation, which is like being like very, very active and like not able to sit still. And that's actually also a documented symptom of depression. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people suffering with quite significant depression, but they're still making it to work and they're still, you know, high functioning in other ways. Um, but if you're experiencing, you know, a lot of the time of your, you know, the last couple of weeks, you're experiencing mostly depressed mood all the time. You're feeling sad. You're not enjoying things the way you used to. Um, you know, per perhaps a lot of people um, may even have suicidal ideations or feeling like, you know, just not life isn't worth living. It would be better if I wasn't here. Um, you know, the more of these symptoms that we add on um, with depression, they really would be best served. You know, maybe start with your primary care doctor talk to them about it first and then see, you know, if you feel comfortable going to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I think would be a good idea. They don't have to diagnose you with anything. They may say, you know what, everybody, which is true, everybody gets depressed sometimes and everybody has depressed mood. I think this is, you know, a period of depressed mood and I think it's going to pass and I don't think you need to do anything further. And, you know, so a mental health care professional may very well say, say that. Dr. M. Ward the three ways to improve mental health on a daily basis? 
I think going back to some of the things I've already said, I think, you know, people get tremendous mental health benefits by being active, exercising. Um, we learned from the pandemic, especially that being outdoors is essential to people. Like they really get a lot out of just connecting to nature. And we're so lucky we have this beautiful weather in South Florida, like get out there, enjoy it and connect a little bit to nature. And even if you're not, you know, someone who likes to go running or jogging, that's okay, you know, go for a walk, a stroll, and just, you know, take in the environment. That's something that's very soothing, giving yourself downtime, me time. So I really think activity and having some time to yourself, but then also having time to socialize, like that's a really important balance. You know, especially this time with the holidays, as people are starting to socialize more in our community, now they're feeling the strain of like, go, 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 and I'm going to this party and I'm going to that party. And like, you know, for two years, they haven't been doing too much. So now it's really hard for that balance, you know, like the me time versus I want to socialize and participate again in the things that I used to enjoy. But I think there's a, that's, you know, it's important to mention that balance is never a perfect thing. There's no time that any of us will ever achieve like perfect balance. Balance is just an indication of I'm doing too much of this. I need to go maybe do a little bit more of this. Thank you so much, doctor, for your time. Thank you guys for watching. If you care and like this video, please comment, like it, and share it. Until the next time. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.